sliders. And I'm not talking about the kind that you eat at happy hour in junk food restaurants throughout America. If that's what you're thinking about, you gotta go to another channel, thehealthylife.com. Today's sliders is about how to move the camera. If you were to use a camera and hold it in your hand and try to move it like, you know, in, in a video shot, it's probably gonna be a little bit shaky. So you need something that keeps it perfectly smooth and that's what sliders are. A slider is basically just a track that, this is a basic slider here, that hits a track and it has something that slides on it really smoothly. And you put the camera on there. This is a real basic one, it's a little tiny one. And you have two different sizes of threads that go on there. And it comes with little feet that you put on here on each end. So you can set this on the ground like this and slide it. And it also has holes that you can screw into, uh, like here, a tripod or light stands, which I have here. Um, you can, so you can hold it up with all kinds of different ways, but the idea is that you can have it, you know, go up diagonally or vertically. That's what a slider is. Now in the old days, a way to do this was you have a track, you have a, a little uh, wheels that go on. If you have like a flat surface, like a countertop, you can use something like this, but most people don't have, like for example here, there, there's a ridge here, so it goes smooth, ba -dump, ba -dump, smooth, ba -dump, ba -dump. you know, that, if you don't want that, that's what a slider is. By the way, this is a Pico dolly. These are really cute, and I'm gonna show you how to use these in a minute. But let's get to sliders here. The most basic one that campers and hikers and people that go out in the wilderness that, you know, have to backpack, they stick it on a tripod like this, which is basic. If you have a little tiny camera, a little camcorder or something, you can do this. The problem with this is, unless you have a real heavy duty tripod, it can wobble a little bit in the middle, as you can see here. You know, but if you hold it, I mean, it, it's a smooth move. If you hold it steady and the camera is not too heavy. That's a basic one. The second one is, light stands. So you have a light stand underneath each end and that keeps a little bit more steady. And then they come in different sizes. There's the kind that where it's a track like this, it's a single piece of metal, or something a little more heavy duty like these which have two pipes. The, the, this pipe is actually three different sections that are screwed together. So when you're backpacking or hiking it out there, the, the bag that it goes in is only two feet long and then you screw them together and you have something that's six feet long. And you put a dolly on, on there and you roll it. And this is a little bit more heavy duty. For, you can put heavy cameras on stuff like this. This setup is only like $250 at Revolve Camera. It just takes some assembly. Something like this doesn't take a lot of assembly. Uh, this thing here, for example, this is pretty heavy duty because of the track. Look, look at the cross section here. This is a heavy duty piece of metal and it can handle just about anything. And you can see there's holes in here to screw in to hold the lights, the, you know, the light stands, tripods, whatever that you're using to hold it up. But this is, and this is by a company called Movo. This is a really good one. It's five feet long. This one's like 35 bucks at movophoto.com. And there's a long one here. This is a six foot one. This one here is really good. It's really, really long, six feet long. Believe it or not, I got this online from Walmart for 165 bucks. It moves really well. Now the thing about these longer ones is you have to have, because it kind of bows, it starts bowing in the middle. So you have to have something in the middle. There, there's actually a screw hole down here that you can put another tripod underneath to hold it from bowing. But I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Let's get to the fun stuff. Oh, and by the way, the light stands that you can use to hold these things up at each end don't have to be big. Here's a little tiny little light stand. These things are so cute. And you get on location and you open them up. And here's your light stand. Sometimes that's all you need to hold up a, like down there, you can see I have some short ones just to show you. You know, sometimes you don't need to get them really high off the ground. This is easy. This is the simple part. The track is easy. You can get these really cheap. You know, some of these are like 20 bucks or something. And then you just manually move it with your hand. That's like as basic as it gets. Tracks are cheap. A way to move it is really cheap. 
But what if you're the only one out there? What if you want to film yourself talking? You can't be standing there doing this while you're talking unless you have somebody with you. And even then, the, the movement might not be totally smooth. It might be like, again, you got the human arm going, eh, 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 eh. it might be a little bit jerky. So that's where motors come in. And this is where it gets fun. And I'm going to show you some expensive ways and some cheap, some really ridiculously, insanely cheap ways, homemade ways to do this. But before I show you the really cheap way of doing it, let me show you the more expensive pro way. This is the Pro Aim Cam Bird. What makes this special is it uses a counterweight that equals the weight of the camera. So no matter what angle the track is at, the camera is smoothly held in place and it only takes one finger to move it in either direction. even uphill. You can balance this so well you can do cool stuff like this. You can even use this rig as a jib and a slider. It's called a Pro Aim Cam Bird and it's about $1400 without the tripod and about $2000 with the tripod. The track is a simple part. Moving the camera that's where it gets you get creative or it gets expensive. So here's one by a company called Pro Aim. They have all kinds of really cool stuff. I've got all kinds of stuff by Pro Aim. This is a little slider called the Pro Aim Jazz. And what it is, it's motorized and it's so cool because I'm going to show you why in a minute. Now, watch the camera here. It just goes in a straight line. And you can adjust the speed, you can make it go faster and slower. Okay, that's a basic move where the camera just goes like that. Now watch this. There's a knob here and if I pull this knob back, watch this track here. See how it goes diagonally? It goes diagonally. I'm going to do that again. See, I pull this knob. It stays in position here, but it goes diagonally. See what it does to the camera when I move that? It is attached to this diagonal bar. So now when I put this diagonally in place and I move the camera, Watch the angle at which the camera is pointing. See how it's turning? This is called a parallax move. What this does is if I am back here and I want to keep the camera pointing at me at all times. So here I am talking. The camera is looking at me the whole time, even though it's moving. Isn't that cool? Check that. It's just me. There's nobody working the camera. I can program. I can program the track and the camera to st how much it moves as it, how much it looks at me or doesn't look at me, or where the center of focus, is, the center of attention is of the camera. I can make it go really slow. It's going really slow right now, so this could take like five minutes for it to make its move, or I could speed it up so it takes like 10 seconds. But the camera's looking at me the whole time. So that's really cool. This is by a company called Pro Aim. It's a slider called the Pro Aim Jazz. Without the motor is a little over $100. With the motor control system, it's like about $300 at ProAim.com. Here's a basic one by a company called Revolve. This is the this is an early version of it. I've been using this thing for years. And they have different speed motors. This is fast, then they have medium and slow. And you can speed it, slow it down, slow it down so it's barely moving and it slows down to a stop at the end. So it doesn't just go in and then suddenly stop. So as you notice, this is battery powered. You can plug it into the wall or you can battery power it. Now here's another one here. This is another one by Revolve. What's really cool is you can have extension cords for the cable here. They just keep it going as far as you want. I got a lot more cable here so I could be 20 feet back. There it goes. It's between $200 and $400 depending on the setup at revolvecamera.com. And then I push the button in the other direction and it goes back in the other direction. So again, I could be like, you know, as far back as I want. I just keep extending the cord with more extension parts to it. Now, obviously what you do is you screw 
a ball head onto here and then you screw your camera on top of that. Okay, so these are the motorized ones. What about if you don't have a motor? And this is where I started getting creative with my own crazy ideas, and this is where it becomes fun. Here, let's take the six foot one here. You'll notice this end's a little bit lower than this end. So if I was to let this go, it just moves on its own. That's a pretty smooth camera move. So if that's all you want, and if you go like 120 frames per second or something, you've got a shot that can last you two minutes if it's in slow motion and it's smooth. Now, this is obviously for a, if you're the only if you're the only one working it and you're not trying to film yourself. But what if you were trying to film yourself? And what if you wanted it to go back in the other direction? You wanted to go this way and then back and forth. That's where the fun begins. All right. Check this out. Enter the old world method of string pulling. This is funny. All you have to do is get some string. This is where high tech becomes ridiculous and it's so easy and simple. You just tie a piece of string to this thing. And then you come over here and you find something to have it wrap around. Let's take this. So now we have camera on a string on a track going around a post and I'm holding this end here. Now let's say I'm, I'm about to film myself. All right, so here I am. Let's say there's a desk in front of me or something, which I'm going to show you a shot where I actually did this. And I start talking. Now watch. Oh, I need to unscrew this. All right, it's ready to go. Now I'm going, hello there. Anyway, welcome to my show today. I'm sitting here talking and the camera's moving. Isn't that cool? The camera's moving. I'm talking. I'm pulling the string, blah, 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 blah. All right. Or I could be sitting here just pulling it like this, where you don't see my arms moving. And then when it gets to the end, I just let it go. There it goes. It goes on its own. It's going on its own. It's got to move on its own. And then I could stop it. Isn't that cool? So I can make it go back and forth and back and forth. Again, I can go like this. Hello. Here I'm talking. I'm talking. You're not seeing my arms moving because it's underneath the desk. And I'm moving the camera. The camera's moving. This is as silly as it gets, but it works. And here's a shot that I actually did. It was funny it's because this was actually a serious talk and I was the only one around. Kara's not here a lot of times during the day, so I have nobody to help me. And I do my videos very spontaneously, so I don't have time to call somebody to come over. So I got to figure out a way fast. How can I make the camera move while I'm talking? And this is, I actually did this in this shot. It's so cool. So that's one way to do it. Now let's say, I'm too concentrating on what I'm saying and I don't want to pull a string. Well, that's where you get a motor to pull a string. This is where, this is, I'm going to show you what I did here. This is where it gets very MacGyver-ish. It's kind of fun. There's these motors you can buy on Amazon that are slow motors. Um, most of these, a lot of these are used for like, for example, uh, turning the, the, inside the microwave that makes the food turn really slow. These, these motors you can get at different speeds from 1 RPM to this one's 20 RPM, this one's 30 RPM. So they turn really slow and they're 110 volts or you can get them at low voltage too. And you hook them up like this to a cord. Make sure you insulate it well. And then you have a plug on here. And when, when you plug it in, it turns really slow. So I'm going to plug one in and you can see it. Here, you see it turning? Now that shaft, if you were to coil up string on that shaft, it would take quite a while for it to move the camera on the track. That little shaft, it, it would take a lot of turns to make that camera move. So you need something wider attached to it. 
And that's what this is. And this is where it gets kind of fun. This is my little way. <laughs> this is a, uh, okay, this is funny. This is a motor. This is, you see the motor in here? Okay, that's a motor like this that I then glued to this little grip device called a receiver plate, which you can get at modern studio equipment. It goes on your light stand. I just glued it to there. So now that goes on a light stand. It's glued on there. And then I got, you guys recognize what this is? This is a fan from a bathroom vent. It costs like a buck. <laughs> you can get it on, I can get anything on Amazon. So I attached the motor to the bath, the, the microwave motor to the bathroom vent. And this is cool because now, and you screw it to the top of a light stand and the bigger drum makes more string get coiled up as it's turning. So I plug it in, put a switch on there. My beautiful high tech homemade electrical wiring job. And there it goes. Now it's turning. This is turning for me at just the right speed for making string get coiled up for the track. So let's make this track a little bit higher up on this end this time. Let's do the other end. So, so now when we pull from this end, it comes up and if you let go, it'll go back down. Okay, so if I was to attach this thing right here, I need a piece of tape. This is just real quick and dirty because I'm just trying to make a demonstration here, but it would be a little bit better than that. And the ribs actually give the string some friction to grab onto and make sure that the uh, string is at the same height as the track. There we go, it's turning. So here's a finished shot using this setup. Look how smooth the camera motion is. It's so amazingly smooth using this cheap little thing that only costs a few dollars to make and a piece of string and a microwave motor and a, and a bathroom fan. It doesn't have to be really expensive, fancy equipment. Just be resourceful with what you have sitting around. Just something that slowly pulls the camera down the track. Here I used a faster 20 or 30 RPM motor and just used the thread spool on some cardboard. Hey, whatever works. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just be creative with whatever you have lying around. I've done this before also couple of 1x12s. This end's a little bit higher than that end. You have your dolly on there. If you let it go, it goes on its own. Put a ball head on there. Put your camera on that. If the front wheels are turned, obviously the camera can move in different directions like that. This is really good for product shots. Turn the wheels so it curves around the object. Just make sure you have a flat surface without any ridges or grooves. And it's amazing how simple it is to do a cool looking shot. You want it to go in a straight line. You put the wheels in a straight line. And then you hook a string up to it. I did this on it for, a, for this shot here, the shot that you're looking at right now. I had the camera on these boards being pulled by a string uphill like this and then when it got to the end I flipped the switch and it went in reverse and the, the, the motor started unwinding the cord and it started going back in the other direction and then we could just go back and forth and back and forth during the whole talk without actually having to manually work the camera by hand like this and again this is called a Pico dolly can get this at Revolve. All the, these are cheap. It's under $100 at Revolve camera. Everybody's got them. They're really getting them at B&H too. So these are the basics of moving a camera. There's other ways too. You can get a motorized car, you know, get a toy car if you want, but 
then again, how are you gonna turn it on and off if you're the only one there? I try to make things um, as if I'm the only one there and there's nobody to help me. And because sometimes you're out in the middle of nowhere or you're alone at home and you wanna do a shot. So I try to figure out things that are things that I could just do, you know, from 10 feet away, click a button, pull a string, whatever. And I share it with you when I come up with these crazy, silly ideas, but they work. They work. I've used them in actual videos. The tracks are cheap. You can get tracks anywhere. These, these ones here, like that long one, that's from China. You can get some of these things super cheap. There's a million of them out there. You can use slider tracks for, you know, uh, curtains, curtain rods, whatever. There's a million ways to get tracks. That's not the tricky part. The tricky part is how you're gonna move this thing if you're not moving it by hand. So that's what I was trying to show you today. Um, and I thought, you know, whatever I come up with crazy ideas, I'll share it with you, because that's what I'm about, is giving you guys things that, ideas that I like to share in photography. That's what this channel is about, because I love photography. Tell your friends about this channel. I give away a lot of free things. Uh, Marcus Picks, M-A-R-K-U-S-P-I-X. Stay tuned for the next fun episode. What crazy idea will I come up with next? See you in the next one.